In today's video, we talk about the way God tells us, watch yourself. Even when I punish your enemy, be careful how you react. Hi everyone, it's Judy Karanja and I speak to you on relationships, family, wellness and faith. Thank you so much. I love you for watching. Remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. Have you ever seen God come through for you when an enemy has been either bullying you or frustrating you, committed sin and gotten away with it, stolen from you and gotten away with it, maligned you and gotten away with it, uh, destroyed your business, destroyed your ministry, destroyed your church and gotten away with it. And now you're just feeling God is so good. Oh, Jehovah came through for me. God has gotten them. The Bible says you have to watch yourself when your enemy comes into their judgment and their trouble. In the Bible, in Obadiah, God is talking to Edomites. And remember, Israel got divided. And now you had two kingdoms and sometimes they would fight and they would war against each other. Sometimes one kingdom was unjust with the other and then the Lord sent punishment for what they did to their brothers. And now the Edomites are being rebuked because of how much they rejoiced when God came to destroy Jacob. It was just that God was destroying Jacob, but he said, your spirit was wrong. You are vindictive. You are hurtful. You are merciless, even when I was dealing with Jacob. And because of that, my anger is going to turn towards you. He says in Obadiah 1.10, For violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captive his forces, when foreigners entered his gates and they cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. The Lord is saying when strangers came, when wicked people who don't know God came to destroy him, you behaved as if you were one of them. You destroyed him right along with them. Someone who has deeply wounded you, destroyed your business, stolen your girlfriend, um, had an affair with your wife and she ran away, stole your husband. You know those deep wounds and you have cried before God in fasting and praying and the Lord has had you. And you've been mature enough not to revenge because you know that vengeance belongs to God. And then with time, the Lord brings judgment to them. He just withdraws and the enemy comes in and starts to plunder them. And you literally start seeing their life unraveling. That marriage that was started when they left you is now falling down or somebody who just messed up your business or stole money from you and was flying high now has fallen flat on the ground and they are paying for their sin you know if nobody else knows you and god know this person is getting paid and is getting judged because of what they did to you the lord says do not rejoice over it do not gloat do not publicize it do not be happy about it fear god do not assist those who are hurting them don't go out there and say you know it's because of who i am they touched me don't boast don't brag. Let God do his judgment. You keep your heart. Keep your heart tender before God. Keep your heart gracious before God. Keep your heart merciful. God is showing you mercy by dealing with this person who is actually your brother but behaved like your enemy. He says, don't go in there and make the situation worse. You should not have gazed on the day of your brother in the day of his captivity. Nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of their distress. You should not have entered the gate of my people. You should have stayed away. Yes, they hurt you. Yes, they plundered you. Yes, I saw your tears. Yes, you cried to me. Yes, vengeance is mine. Now let me do my work. Get out of the way. Let me do my work. Don't put it on social media. Don't take photos. Don't say, can't touch this. They're going through what they went through because they touched me. Stay humble before God. Fear God. He's watching your heart and he's watching your reaction. He says, you should not have entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Indeed, you should not have gazed on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance. The enemy came to destroy Jerusalem because of the judgment of God. And Edom, who is their brother, went in as well and took their substance. Is your brother falling? Is your brother crumbling because of their own mistakes? Is a fellow church crumbling because of their own mistakes and indiscretion and sin? Yes, they did wrong. God says you shall not be found to be one of those people plundering them. 
that is your brother. Keep your hands off. Do not rejoice in their trouble. You should not have stood at the crossroads to cut off those among them who escaped. As in, as Jerusalem was being invaded, Edomites, who are their brothers, were watching. They're watching and they're gloating and they're happy. And they're like, hey, 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 watch out. They messed with us. They're going to see. And then some of the people took off and ran away. Edomites blocked them and sent them back. Go and die. Kwani, why are you running away? <laughs> you messed with me. Go and die. God said, you should not have done that. You should not have delivered up those among them who remained in the day of distress. Verse 15. For the day of the Lord upon all the nation is near. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your reprisal shall return upon your own head. If you have gone this far and someone has hurt you, wounded you, plundered you, destroyed you, stolen from you, you have cried before God. God has allowed judgment and is punishing them. Don't mess it up. Don't interfere. Don't gloat. Don't publicize. Don't brag. Don't talk about it. Go on with your life. God says, do not rejoice over the day of trouble of your brother. And this is one reason I will never rejoice when another church is going through trouble. I don't care how many mistakes they have made. They are my brothers. They are my brothers. They confess the Lord Jesus as savior. Maybe they have indiscretions from here to the moon. I will let God deal with them. I will hit my knees and pray for them. I have been through church scandal. I know how it hurts and destroys lives. I know people who have not gone back to church because of a scandal they went through and it just broke their faith and broke everything they knew about God. I will smite the shepherd to scatter the sheep. Anytime you see the enemy go for a shepherd, it's the sheep he's after. When you publicize it and you gloat about it and say, ha, 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 that pastor, now he's in jail. Now he's in trouble. Ataki, ataki jua, atajua hajui. <laughs> Go to your closet. No matter how mean that man of God has been, no matter how wrong your brother has been, no matter how cruel that relative has been, no matter how bad that business was that wounded and destroyed you in such a deep way, God says, when their trouble comes, go away, far away, far away. Don't rejoice, don't gloat, or I will turn judgment. I will turn exactly what I've done to them, and it will come to you. Phew. Let's watch ourselves, even as concerns the dealings of God with those who have wounded us. God bless you so much. Thank you for watching. See you next time.